Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Salento. I'm the owner of Texas Sinus and Snoring, and today I want to talk to you about septoplasty. I'm sure you've all heard of septoplasty before. It's a common procedure because it fixes a common problem, the deviated septum. People talk about it all the time, but not everybody knows what it is. Now, there are many misconceptions about uh, septoplasty and deviated septum. I'd like to talk about those and what is actually going on inside your nose before we talk about what to expect from surgery as well as the rest of the procedure and uh, how it will benefit you. Many online sources confuse rhinoplasty, which is a cosmetic procedure, also known as a nose job, with septoplasty, which is a procedure to straighten the nasal passages on the inside of the nose. In general, septoplasty does not address the appearance of your nose, although we can sometimes straighten the nostrils of a badly deviated septum. We are able to do the entire surgery with small cameras and specialized tools, completely avoiding any external excisions, and there is little to no bruising or swelling on the face, and most of the time it's just a 15 or 20 minute in-office procedure here at our state-of-the-art facility. Your nose should not appear any different after septoplasty unless you had a rhinoplasty at the same time. Septoplasty by itself also does not help your sinuses in general. Your sinuses have separate openings and septoplasty is often combined with endoscopic sinus surgery or balloon sinuplasty. But the septoplasty part does not change your sinuses in general. So if those are all the things that septoplasty isn't, what is it? Septoplasty means, simply put, to fix the septum. The septum is the structure in the nose that divides the left and the right sides of the nose. If you think of a wall dividing your dining room and your kitchen, if that wall isn't straight and it bows out in one direction or the other into your living room or into your kitchen, it's going to make one or the other smaller. The key to great breathing is to have equal and strong airflow on both sides of the nose. Sometimes your septum isn't straight, just like that wall. This could be because of trauma or because of something you just had since birth. What a septoplasty is doing is removing the bone and cartilage structure that is creating that bowing effect, bringing the septum back to the midline and therefore straightening the inside of your nose. In the past, it was necessary and common to pack the nose and place large plastic splints in the nose after a septoplasty, and this accounted for much of the discomfort and post-op pain. At Texas Sinus and Snoring, we don't pack the nose, and we rarely place splints, so the post-operative recovery is relatively short and pain-free compared with the old-fashioned way. Turbinates are another part of the picture that we always address at the same time. Turbinates are bony structures that are covered with a lining that can swell and shrink depending on the environment. These are on the side of your nasal passageways. Their main job is to moisten and warm the air as it comes into your nose. If they are too big, either from allergy or genetics, they'll block the air coming into your nose, making it difficult to breathe. There are many different ways to make them smaller, but know that all the procedures we perform happen without any incisions on the outside of your nose. Most people benefit from septoplasty and turbinate reduction who have nasal congestion, nasal obstruction, nasal drainage, difficulty tolerating a CPAP machine, snoring, recurrent nasal bleeds, chronic headaches, and even sinusitis. The procedure itself can happen in the office or the operating room, but you are asleep for the procedure in something called a twilight state. Septoplasty takes about 15 to 20 minutes to do and recovery is relatively simple. There's a small amount of nasal discharge for the first week, and because we don't place splints or pack the nose, we ask that you don't blow your nose and don't strain or work out for the first week, as this could cause bleeding. Pain is subjective, but the average patient rates this procedure as about a 2 out of 10, and the range is high. We know this, and we give you the tools to make it through the first post-operative week. Expect to have some bleeding every day for the first few days after surgery. This is a normal part of the healing process. If you don't have a job that requires straining or physical activity, most people can return to work within three to five days. This means if we do your procedure on a Thursday and you're not in pain, on pain meds, you can probably go back to work on Monday or Tuesday. Some people decide to take the following week completely off. We can tailor your post-op to your personal needs. Do not blow your nose and do not lift anything heavier than 10 pounds. 
and do not exercise for seven to 10 days after the surgery to avoid bleeding. Less than 5% of patients get splints placed. If, if this happens, we remove this at the first post-operative appointment. They're very important to ensure everything heals in its proper place. And also remember, this was the biggest source of pain in the past were the size of these splints. I cut them down and trim them so that they fit your nostrils. So while they're in place, it's not very painful. And when I remove them, don't expect a lot of pain. Every surgery has risks, including septoplasty. There's a comprehensive list of complications provided at the time of consent. But the most common risks of septoplasty are bleeding and possible disruption of flaps due to blowing your nose too early. Now that I have talked about things that we don't want to happen, let's spend some time on what we actually expect to happen. Once you leave the center, you should notice an immediate increase in nasal breathing. As the nose starts to heal, you will find that the inside swells a bit and there's an increase in snot or drainage. This is normal, you're not getting a cold. The better you clean your nose, the less this will be the case, but this will be completely removed at the first visit. In the end, I expect your nasal breathing will be night and day different than before surgery. I hope that this will help allergy season to be less bothersome in the future, and it will help you sleep better with less snoring at night and better CPAP tolerance. In the long term, nasal bleeding can also be less if that's something that was affecting you. Some patients say that their sense of smell is improved and that their headaches are relieved as well. I love performing septoplasty because I love helping people and I feel that this is one of the simplest procedures that can make the biggest difference in a person's life.